Okay, so I think we are ready to go. Uh, so before we begin the proceedings, um, I would like to acknowledge the, and pay respect to the traditional owners of the land on which we meet, the Galigo people of the Ura Nation. It is upon their ancestral lands that the University of Sydney is built as we share our own knowledge, teaching, learning, and research practices within the university. Um, within this university, may we also pay respect to the knowledge embedded forever within the Aboriginal custodianship of the country. So, uh, hello everyone. I'm Omid Kavi. I'm the Deputy Director of Sydney Nano for Member Engagement. Today, we welcome Professor Kasude uh, Goda from University of Tokyo for uh, Sydney Nano Distinguished Lecture. When I was reading his uh, biography, uh, basically I had several explosions in my, in my head. <laughs> uh, so many breakthroughs after breakthroughs, which I couldn't actually go through all of them. Uh, so basically it's a start uh, with his involvement in LIGO project at, at MIT. He's a graduate of Berkeley and MIT. So after that, the uh, fastest ever built camera uh, using lasers with five throw frame per second. Uh, up to 100 uh, frames, uh, that's just mind blowing. Um, and after that, like the topic of today's uh, talk, which is on uh, ultra fast flow cytometry. And uh, without further ado, I invite you to, to the podium and, and please join me in welcome Professor Goda. Thank you. So this is my microphone. Yeah, okay. I can give you another microphone if you okay. like. Okay, so or maybe this is there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, just turn <clears throat> it on, or I can see this. This is fine. Okay. Yep. Good. Well, thank you very much for the introduction, and also thank you for, uh, very much for the invitation, Ben. You're recording. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good. Uh, so. Uh, Today I will talk about uh, sort of the combination of ultra-fast imaging and uh, uh, cell analysis. <clears throat> so you might wonder why, what's happening to my leg, actually. So this is what happened, basically. <laughs> so it's actually a tendon rupture last Friday, actually, only like four or five days ago when I was playing soccer. So, so I'm not always like this, you know, like uh, it only happened like last week. <clears throat> Hopefully, I, I should be able to walk in the next couple of months. So before my uh, talk, let me sort of introduce uh, my group, Godala at the University of Tokyo. <clears throat> so University of Tokyo, of course, located in Tokyo. Uh, <clears throat> it's the largest public university in Japan. It has 10 schools, such as School of Science, Engineering, Medicine, Law Education, and so on and so forth. But a lot of students and a lot of Nobel laureates. And also, according to Nature Index, uh, uh, University of Tokyo is ranked number five <clears throat> uh, based on the largest share of articles published in the 82 journals tracked by the Nature Index. And also, Rugby World Cup is coming up soon in Tokyo. I mean, not necessarily just in Tokyo, but everywhere in Japan. So you should definitely visit uh, Japan, I'm sure this uh, World Cup rugby is, uh, is a major thing for Australians, right? So in, it, starting in two weeks. So this is uh, Godalab's logo. Uh, so this sort of depicts my research uh, nicely. So this is basically a biological cell, and this is G. It's a laser pulse or laser uh, or cell nucleus. And this is optical spectrum. So this whole thing sort of indicates the optical imaging or laser-based imaging and spectroscopy for uh, biomedical applications. <clears throat> so that's what I do. And for the past several years, my group has been uh, working on the development of high-speed uh, imaging and high-speed spectroscopy uh, techniques and also uh, uh, exploitation of new applications based on those technologies. <clears throat> such as these. And today I will talk about this, uh, uh, the middle one, Intelligent Image Activate Cell Sorting published in Cell last year. So cell analysis. 
what is cellular analysis? <clears throat> uh, so cell is basically the structure and function unit of life. It's a very important piece in, in biology. And there are many, many different kinds of cells because cells are uh, by nature heterogeneous. So neurons, glucosides, platelets, stem cells, yeast, blah, 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 for different functions and also for different applications. So deep understanding of cellular structure and function is essential in life science, medicine, and by industry. <clears throat> there are lots of unmet needs in, in cell analysis. For example, like how to identify unknown cells and, and their functions, or how to isolate cells with unique features, or uh, how to detect uh, saturated tumor cells for diagnosis, or how to produce uh, many antibodies using cells and so forth. Uh, so these uh, are unmet needs uh, very important in cell analysis, but cell analysis is quite challenging in general because this is sort of analogous to this West Wally problem. <clears throat> Sometimes it's called West Waldo, but it was Wally in UK. Uh, basically, this Wally wants you to find him at high speed with high accuracy, right? This is exactly uh, analogous to the situation in cell analysis. <clears throat> right, then because there are many, many different kinds of uh, different uh, people, right? It's a heterogeneous population of uh, people with similar features to Wally, right? <clears throat> uh, do you know where Wally is? Okay, so you use microscopes too much. <laughs> right here, okay. good. Right, so this West Wally problem is translated into uh, uh, limitations of conventional technologies. So <clears throat> most people use uh, optical microscopy with a, a cell picker. Basically, you investigate every single cell one by one in the large heterogeneous population of cells under a microscope to find unique ones and then pick, pick them up uh, by pipetting. Right? <clears throat> but this process is highly time consuming labor intensive and inefficient, right? <clears throat> Even with a robotic arm, the throughput is only like uh, one cell uh, per second. It's pretty slow. On the other hand, there's a technology called fluorescence activated cell sorting or uh, so-called FACTS. FACTS is an automated system that uh, counts, analyzes, and sorts uh, single cells out of a population using scattering and fluorescence measurements. So this is the uh, system, this is the conventional machine. And you basically start with a cell population and you mix it with a fluorescence leveled antibodies. And you flow those cells uh, into a single stream. And then you uh, excite those cells with a laser. Uh, and then you know, fluorescent signals or uh, scatter light uh, get detected by the photodetectors. And then you use those signals uh, to activate the cell solder to sort uh, these cells. <clears throat> That's why it's called fluorescence activated cell, cell sorting. <clears throat> so it's good. It, you know, it's a, it's a widely used technology uh, in hospitals and also in uh, universities and, and uh, medical institutes. <clears throat> but it doesn't have a special resolution. So it basically, it's a single point measurement. So it gives you rough. Uh, measurements, uh, but it cannot uh, identify and isolate cells based on the special uh, features. <clears throat> so there's a trade-off between this uh, cell picking microscopy and, and facts, right? Basically, the cell picking microscopy provides uh, high content, but low throughput. So you, you can find worry, but it will take a long time. Or if you use facts, which is uh, high throughput, but low content, it is very difficult to find worry, right? <clears throat> so there's a trade-off between these two technologies. So this trade-off is sort of translated into this figure merit. Uh, here, the x-axis is the throughput. There's a number of cells per second to measure. The y-axis is the cellular information content per, uh, per cell, right? Basically, the amount of information you can acquire per cell. Uh, <clears throat> so fax is here, and cell picking microscope is here. So if you put 
the uh, conventional uh, or commercially available instrument specifications into this uh, figure merit, they actually occupy these areas, as you can see. <clears throat> so basically, there's a clear trade-off, right? <clears throat> but what, what is here, right? This is what we want to find worry, right? This is an unexpected, unexplored area that contains unknown cells, rare cells, smart cells, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> so in order to find worry or worry like cells, right? You need uh, uh, more information to make the invisible visible. Uh, at the same time, you want to eliminate enormous uh, time and effort by making the, uh, the, <clears throat> the process higher throughput, right? So it's highly challenging. So this is our goal. We need this uh, worry finding tech, but basically high throughput and high information content. Right? <clears throat> so this technology, Intelligent Image Activate Sensoring, addresses this need. And so let me sort of talk about this uh, technology, how it works, and how it can be used for applications today. <clears throat> so as he uh, uh, mentioned, I was a LIGO scientist a while ago. You know, LIGO stands for uh, Laser Interferometer Gravitation Wave Observatory. So you received the Nobel Prize uh, in 2017 for the detection of gravitation waves. <clears throat> and I was a uh, LIGO scientist, and I was uh, actually involved in the development of these large-scale microsonic interferometers <clears throat> for sensitive measurement. Uh, so flow cytometry, fortunately, shares many aspects of LIGO such as optical engineering, complex machinery, interdisciplinary inter integration, and precision measurement. <clears throat> so I, I sort of brought the great tradition of LIGO technologies to flow cytometry to demonstrate uh, intelligent image activated cell sorting. <clears throat> so this is a paper we published last year in Cell. And what I want to show you here is basically the number of courses and the number of aggregations. As you can see here, you know, well, maybe you can see de in detail, like the physics, chemistry, biology, computer science, mechanical engineering, so on and so forth. So it's a huge uh, interdisciplinary uh, team's uh, uh, work. Let me actually let's see. Yeah, it's okay, yeah. And this is a picture of the development team. So we said the initial idea was conceived 10 years ago. And then uh, we got some major fun in Japan, uh, like about five years ago, and we started uh, developing that uh, uh, technology. And here, here's a movie. It's an animated movie that shows the functionality of this technology. So let me show the movie first, and then uh, let me explain each component one by one. So this guy puts a tube of, uh, a tube that contains a, a cell, biological cell, appended. And this is a big picture of the image active cell sort of. The cells come in through this yellow tube. And initially the cells are uh, randomly oriented. Uh, but we use a hydrodynamic focuser to create a single stream of cells. And we use a specialized optical microscope to take picture of every single cell in high speed. <clears throat> and then uh, we acquire, I see uh, three colors, two, co two fluorescent colors and a white bright field. And we digitize the signals. And on the image processor, we, uh, we reconstruct the images. And then, uh, and then later on, we patch them together and then extract features from every single image and then we map those extracted features to the uh, multi-dimensional feature space to decide whether we sort or unsort those uh, cells. <clears throat> and then uh, once we decide the uh, sort cell, and then we send the additional signal to the cell sorter module to sort cells to basically check the uh, target cells from the mainstream of the cells, you know, left or right. And then we basically, uh, <clears throat> at the end get uh, 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 sorted and, and unsorted the cell tubes. So, so let me recap uh, how this 
uh, system works. Let me go back to the laser pointing. So this is the big picture of the system. <clears throat> this is basically a single microfluidic uh, device and cells come in here. And then we use uh, uh, so-called the uh, frequency division multiplex microscope, which I will explain later, to acquire uh, two fluorescent uh, color images and one bright field image. And we digitize the signals. And then uh, the images are sent to this real-time intelligent image processor, where we process those images and, and recognize them and analyze them uh, in real time. And then <clears throat> we send that decision signal to the dual membrane push pull cell sorter to sort the cells at the right timing. Here, the cells are flowing at one meter per second, and this distance is about 32 uh, millimeter. That means we have about 32 milliseconds to analyze and decide <coughs> in between. Right? <coughs> so that's how it works. So this part sort of corresponds to the, the human recognition. <laughs> And this part corresponds to decision making. And this part corresponds to commanding. And finally, this part corresponds to actuation. This case, uh, it, no, no. just like a, a ultra fast automated microscope with a cell picking uh, capability. So the whole thing, but it's, it's very fast. <clears throat> so this is a sort of big picture of the real setup. So we have a large optical system. Uh, integrated with microfluidics, with the monitors to monitor every single process. And this is a zoomed picture. So this is a microfluidic device or microfluidic chip. The cells come in here and they flow in this direction. And we use this uh, pair of uh, object lenses to take uh, uh, pictures uh, or take a picture of every single cell in high speed flow. And then this is where we sort cells. <clears throat> So this distance is about 32 millimeter, uh, 32 millimeter or 32 millisecond at one meter per second. And so let me talk about the uh, principles of each component uh, in more detail. So this uh, ultra fast uh, 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 microscope called the frequency division uh, multiplex microscope <clears throat> is, is effective for uh, fast blood free imaging. Uh, you know, Flow speed is one meter per second. It's pretty fast for uh, CCD or CMOS uh, image sensor. So they are not capable of uh, taking pictures. So we, we needed uh, to invent a new uh, high speed imaging technology. <clears throat> so this is how it works. So we start with a laser. It's a uh, CW laser. It's split into two arms. And then we have a pair of acoustic optic deflectors to create uh, this sort of uh, array beam and these two array beams uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, sort of overlap with each other to create uh, a, a beam of excitation, uh, uh, sorry, an array of excitation beams, but each beam is frequency modulated at a different frequency. So in a sense, this is a frequency comb, but each comb line is directed at a different angle. <clears throat> so this beam is illuminating the uh, flowing cells, so here. And, and here, each beam is modulated at a different frequency. So when the cells come like this, uh, you get fluorescent signal, but depending on the location uh, or special coordinates, you get uh, a different uh, uh, <clears throat> frequency modulated fluorescent signals. And then you detect those signals with uh, uh, three APDs, avalanche photo detectors, in, in the time domain, so signal looks like this, and then you demodulate this signal at different frequency, those modulated frequency, to demodulate that signal. And then you can reconstruct the fluorescence images like this. Okay. And once you get those images, you send that information to the uh, real-time intelligent image processor for decision making. So here, this is a microfluidic device. And we get the three uh, channel signals uh, from the imager. And also we actually measure the speed, flow speed of the cells and additional three uh, channel uh, uh, information. And then we reconstruct the image. <clears throat> and then we do uh, intelligent image analysis uh, based on the convolutional neural network. And then, um, 
and the information will be sent to the time management module. So here, what's important is, is to sort the right cells at the right time, right? It's possible that we do the image analysis correctly, but we sort the wrong cell because we, it's possible that we, we, uh, we, we trigger the uh, set of sorter at the wrong timing. <clears throat> so this speed information is critical. Uh, then everything is operated on the uh, all IP network uh, at 10G. IP stands for internet protocol. So everything is operated on the internet protocol. It's, it's very important to speed up the communication between different modules, like FPGAs and CPUs and, and GPUs. And then everything is determined and then the decision signal is sent to the sort driver. And this is the picture of the microfluidic chip. Um, <clears throat> So we have a, a 2D uh, hydrodynamic focuser because the cells are uh, coming uh, randomly. And we have uh, two cis fluids like this, X direction and Y direction to create a single stream of cells. And this, this is where we interrogate uh, uh, those uh, cells optically. And also we need to maintain the single cell stream for large distance using the acoustic focuser. <clears throat> And once the cells uh, reach this cell sorter module, we use this push-pull cell sorter that consists of uh, 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 two piezoelectric actuators and glass membranes. So when the cells come, you activate this PZT to push the glass membrane to create a secondary flow in this direction. So the cells are kicked like this. Or you can do this in the, in the other direction like this <clears throat> to do a high-speed sorting. So this is a sort of a the demonstration of the high-speed uh, sorting of cells flowing at one meter per second. <clears throat> and this is the movie that shows the operation of the uh, image activated cell sorting. <clears throat> so this is a big picture, it's a pretty uh, big system. <clears throat> and in the morning, we basically uh, discuss, uh, you know, the preparation and, and also uh, what kind of experiment to do. And this guy uh, puts uh, a tube in, basically insert the tube that contains cells. And then we monitor every event. So these, you know, these things are event, every single cell, or maybe cluster cells. And then we basically monitor, and then we basically wait about 10 to 20 minutes, depending on the number of cells. And we collect two tubes, in sorted and unsorted uh, cell tubes. And then we analyze those uh, <clears throat> uh, cell tubes afterwards to make sure that we sorted the right type of cells, the right uh, uh, type of cells with right features. And then finally, we discuss and, and also uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, talk about the subsequent use of the sorted cells for like sequencing or directed evolution or uh, uh, many different kinds of use. <clears throat> So this, uh, these two figures shows the, actually the processing time. It's basically it, how long it took to process each event. So here the event is basically a single cell or cluster cell or uh, cell debris <coughs> or maybe uh, some uh, garbage sometimes. So here under the classical image analysis algorithms, image analysis is basically negligible and image construction data analysis Take some time, but everything uh, is less than 32 milliseconds. Right? <clears throat> Here, if we do a uh, deep learning, a, a deep convolution neural network, or deep uh, CNN, that consists of six layers, uh, it takes a little longer time, but still, like 99.8% of the events uh, took less than 32 milliseconds. <clears throat> and based on this uh, CNN model, we uh, we validated the system with frozen bees of different sizes. And then uh, we basically finalized the parameters, those specifications. So the throughput is about 100 events per second and through, uh, purity is about 99%. And we also tested the applicability of the, of the technologies to various uh, cell types and sizes. Okay, let me go back to, there's a pointing mode so that other people can see. So, <clears throat> so we tested the uh, uh, microalgal cells of different sizes from three micron to 30 micron. So here we see the bright field images uh, 
uh, first color image one and first color image two and the marginal images. So basically three color images. And also we tested the human blood cells like from single platelets to uh, leukocytes or large platelet aggregates. And also we tested human cancer cells. So putting that specification into this figure merit, basically we conquered this uh, unexpert area for the first time. So we basically uh, <clears throat> demonstrated this technology about 1,000 times better than cell picking microscope. Basically we accelerated the throughput of the cell picking microscope <clears throat> uh, by factor 1,000. So what are the potential applications? You know, what can we do with this uh, new technology? So that's a new and, and thing, that, and also that the most important thing for biologists. So we collaborated with a lot of biologists, uh, and we identified a lot of interesting applications. The first one was this uh, Chlamydomonas Hadithi cells. It's uh, basically a, a microalgal species. It's a single cell microalgal species that lives in and ponds and lakes. <clears throat> it's, it's a sort of a model organism useful for studying uh, photosynthesis and uh, developing biofuel. It's about this, this size, about five to 10 micron in size. So we collaborated with these two people, Professor Fukuzawa and uh, Yamano. <clears throat> so they've been studying uh, uh, photosynthesis for a long, long time using micro microalgae. <clears throat> so in microalgae or algae in general, contains this uh, uh, chloroplast. It's the most important uh, part for carbon fixation. <clears throat> it basically fixes the CO2 right, in the body. And basically, you know, it, it photosynthesizes and uh, converts CO2 into sugar. That's what it does. <clears throat> and so the, this uh, Fukuzawa says the chloroplast is the most important thing. And, and uh, this, uh, in the chloroplast, uh, the system called the carbon concentration mechanism, or CCM, plays a, uh, a, a vital role in maintaining high photosynthetic activity by transporting and concentrating CO2. Uh, in the chloroplast. <clears throat> but this, this uh, Yamano says, we want to study it, but it's, it's very time consuming, because he said, we want to identify and isolate climate. One of the they had it is mutants with unique CCM patterns, but this process is extremely time consuming and labor intensive. Even with a still uh, graduate student at Kyoto University, it takes six months. <clears throat> so if they understand it, if they understand the, the CCM, it's very important for uh, efficient biofuel production and for uh, increasing uh, grain production by in introducing CCM in, into terrestrial plants and also uh, for uh, prevention of global warming. <clears throat> so we, uh, we use this uh, image active cell sorter to sort uh, uh, chlamydomonas cells with unique CCM patterns. So we start with a, a, a population of Chlamydomonas reinhardity cells, and we basically excited those cells with a UV light to cause a random mutagenesis. And this is what we produced. Basically, it's a huge heterogeneous population. X axis is the area, and Y axis is the localization of the CCM. And normally, those Chlamydomonas cells have a localized CCM, right? Usually, the healthy ones are the localized ones. But the unique ones, like super ones, super chlamydomonas ones, have sort of uh, distributed CCM uh, throughout the body. Had, that has a sort of higher capability of uh, carbon fixation. <clears throat> but the, of course, the, uh, the population is not very large compared to the entire population. It's about 1%. It's about 2,000 out of 221,000 uh, events. <clears throat> So we did it. So <clears throat> we used the intelligent image activist cell sorter to detect uh, those cells and sorted those uh, cells, uh, which actually consist of 1% of the total population. And if you try to do it by hand, it will take six months, but we can do it within 40 minutes. So it's about 6,500 times faster than manual pipetting with a microscope. And then we generated a lot of uh, colonies of sorted mutants 
and actually we developed a lot of mutants with a lot of unique CCM patterns. <clears throat> and now those two professors are studying the genes of these mutants, which, which are responsible for this uh, production of unique CCM patterns. And once they understand the gene, they can, <clears throat> they can uh, edit other chlamydomonas cells using that uh, CCM or gene pattern. And then eventually they want to install the CCM pattern into the terrestrial plant. Terrestrial plant usually don't have CCM. But if you can install that uh, CCM pattern into the terrestrial plants, and the terrestrial plants uh, can uh, fix CO2 much, much more efficiently than the usual terrestrial plants. And this is very important for uh, prevention of global warming. <clears throat> so that's what, what we are doing right now. The next application we tried was uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, blood cell screening. So blood contains many, many, many different kinds of uh, cell types, like uh, you know, uh, white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets. So we focus on platelets here. Yeah. So we collaborated with these two professors, Yatomi and Yasumoto. These are basically medical doctors in, at the uh, University of Tokyo Hospital. And they have been studying uh, platelet biology. You know, Japan is a sort of aging country. That means a lot of people are uh, older people. <clears throat> and what happens to the older people is that uh, in their blood veins, I mean, their blood veins are usually damaged frequently. And that means platelets tend to get aggregated much more often than the healthy or younger people to, to stop bleeding. Basically, uh, but those platelet aggregates, which are usually good for bleed, uh, for uh, uh, stopping bleeding, are sometimes uh, uh, causing uh, clots in in the heart or in, in the in the brain. That leads to a heart attack or stroke. It's called arterial thrombosis. <clears throat> so this is a, a serious problem in Japan. <clears throat> and this uh, Professor Yatomi says platelet aggregates. Uh, potentially a biomarker related to athletal thrombosis, including heart attack and stroke. So highly accurate quantification and detail analysis of platelet aggregates may lead to the development of new diagnostic and therapeutic monitoring techniques for, for thrombotic disorders. <clears throat> but this is highly challenging. And this Professor Yasmoto said, we want to isolate platelet aggregates from blood, but this process is extremely time consuming and labor intensive because you have to identify platelet aggregates from a huge heterogeneous population of red blood cells, white blood cells, uh, single platelets, and platelet aggregates. <clears throat> you cannot use staining or fluorescence detection because staining itself activates the platelet uh, aggregation. So it, it gives you the false positive events. So you have to use you know, uh, bright field images. You only rely on bright field images to identify uh, platelet aggregates and sold, cell, sold those target cells. <clears throat> so manual pipetting with a microscope takes one to two days. That means they don't do it clinically. <clears throat> so then, yeah, we decide to do it because it's highly important and also highly challenging. So we use intelligent image activated cell solar to only identify and, and, uh, uh, <clears throat> and sold project aggregates. So we developed this uh, CNN uh, composed of eight layers. Uh, and then we get a lot of images of uh, single platelets, uh, uh, large platelet aggregates, and leukocytes, red blood cells, and so on and so forth. And the CNN, uh, when, when CNN receives images, it basically gives a calculate and gives uh, a, 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 a probability. It, it basically means that what this guy comes, it's a doublet platelet aggregates, the CNN or deep learning, you know, AI thinks, or oh, this 95% platelet aggregates, maybe 5% are single platelets, so <clears throat> just like a human brain, right? <clears throat> so what it does, and then based on that analysis, within 30 to millisecond in real time, the image activates cell solar sort those target platelet aggregates from the large heterogeneous population. And then we took only one minute to do it, so which is 1,400 times faster than manual pipetting with a microscope. 
So now these two people are very happy because now this techno technology is applicable to clinical analysis. Then because before this technology, there was no technology available to monitor what is going on to the human body after injection of anti drugs into the body. Only like functional MRI, like CT are only available. <clears throat> but of course, uh, they are not uh, 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 useful enough for uh, uh, providing uh, uh, high resolution images. <clears throat> so now these two uh, uh, clinicians are using these technologies to do a, a clinical test currently. <clears throat> so what is the future of this technology? So nicely we obtained a lot of, uh, we got a lot of press coverage uh, in, like, in nature, nature photonics, uh, nature methods and cells. Lots of people showed interest, which is a good thing. And we, uh, unfortunately, we only have one system available in the world, <clears throat> which is located in Tokyo, and also located in uh, the University of Tokyo. So many, after the publication of that cell paper, many people contacted me worldwide, and they basically showed interest that I, I want to use it. And so currently, we made it available to the public, like uh, through uh, 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 collaboration with external users. I'm not sure if, if, if you are interested. If you're interested, please send me an email and we can set up a uh, uh, you know, uh, meeting time and to discuss potential collaboration. <clears throat> but of course, this is limited. We only have one system available. So we launched a startup uh, uh, last year. It's called Saibo. Saibo actually stands for uh, biological cell in Japanese, or sort of sounds cyber, right? Cyber biological cell. Right? <clears throat> It basically sells uh, AI cell sorter or AI, AI cell analyzer for the first time. And these two guys started the startup. I'm a technical advisor for the, for the company. Now, Naonita used to be uh, an engineer at Sony, and uh, Takeaki Sugimura used to be an engineer at Nikon. Okay, he's a uh, uh, basically uh, an expert in uh, uh, image analysis, and he's an uh, expert in flow analysis. <clears throat> and so we, we show that we <clears throat> demonstrated this specification, one thousand times better than a cell picking microscope, but this is not the end. So we have recently upgraded this system, like, like here, uh, so four, 40 times better than the previous system published last year. So currently, we can image uh, more, more cells, like uh, uh, more diverse cells, cell types, such as these, like JAKA cells in fish imaging. So we can do fish image, like fish stands for uh, fluorescence in situ hybridization, so, so that we can see the sort of chromosomes, so like a two chromosomes, like a three chromosome locations. So we can do uh, imaging, uh, fish imaging and sorting based on uh, these images. Also budding yeast cells, you know, budding yeast cells are very important for, you know, fermentation, like for beer, wine, sake or something. <clears throat> and they say that this uh, neck or the waist is very important for the taste of beer or the taste of wine, <clears throat> but it was very challenging to isolate those cells with a narrower neck. Actually, the narrower the neck, the more tasty the beer is. <clears throat> so now we can do this. So we can only sort those yeast cells with narrower waste, right? <clears throat> and also like uh, human cancer cells in blood, you know, uh, isolation of uh, so-called CTC, saturating tumor cells in blood is, is challenging because their uh, you know, chemical features change from cancer stage, you know, stage one to cancer stage four, uh, because they usually rely on single parameters or single biomarkers. Here, by imaging, we can see the surface antigen and also nucleus and other molecules within the cell, cell body simultaneously. So we can do multi-parameter uh, detection identification and isolation of those uh, cancer cells from blood. <clears throat> and also eugenia gracilis cells. These are microalgal cells that produce uh, lipids, 
which are good for biofuel. And actually, the, the more lipid droplets they have, the higher capability, high, higher efficiency they, they produce lipids. <clears throat> so that means the imaging is good. Imaging is useful to identify how many lipid droplets uh, exist in the cell body. <clears throat> now we can do cell sorting based on this high content information. And finally, this is what we want to do in the future. Uh, we want to do so-called Rosetta Stone single cell biology. Uh, Rosetta Stone is, is a stone, the Egyptian stone, uh, that describes the same thing in three different languages, basically. <clears throat> this situation is sort of analogous to cell analysis. Uh, in cell analysis, usually we use three different kinds of technologies, uh, flow cytometry at the population level, microscopy at the cell level, and sequencing at, at the gene level. And because of the use of different technologies, they have uh, sort of different communities, and also they have a different definitions of, of biological cells. You know, I was a physicist. You know, physicists are sort of, uh, you know, are good at unifying things like you know, quantum gravity and that kind of thing. <clears throat> so we are sort of interested in unifying the technologies to unify the definitions, different definitions of biological cells. Uh, so intelligent image activist cell sorting sort of unify the flow cytometry and microscopy. <clears throat> the next challenge is basically the, to integrate this technology with the sequencing so, so that we provide basically the complete picture of single cells. <clears throat> so in summary, so this work has been recently uh, published in Nature Protocol Cell first, and then we sort of uh, developed like a textbook-like paper and published in Nature Protocols. And uh, the acid this was selected for the cover. This case is a urina cell image. It's a mosaic of urina cell composed of many, many urina cell images acquired by image, uh, intelligent image activists. Sort of. <clears throat> so it's a four, 49 pages long. It's like a thesis. Okay, no, one, no one reads. <clears throat> But uh, if you're interested, you know, it basically talks about how to design, build, characterize, and, and use intelligent image activist cell sort. <clears throat> now, finally, I'd like to acknowledge my, my group members and funding agencies. Uh, without their help, and nothing is possible. And also, we have a Facebook page. And Ben just took pictures and uploaded those pictures, I'm sure. Uh, so if you like my talk, or if you like this kind of research, uh, please uh, go to uh, Gold Lab on Facebook and don't forget to like it. Yeah. Thank you very much for listening. Just mind blowing. Thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you. Um, and truly transdisciplinary research. I, I see a lot of colleagues from professions and from here. So that would be a good opportunity. There might be an opportunity to be the part of the next 40x improvement <laughs> of the technology. So if you have any questions, please. Um, yep. Thank you, Victor. Fantastic. So just about the sequencing. And at the moment, we have actually in clinic the potential to develop pharmaceutical Yes. So how do you develop the technology is it more effective, faster? Okay, so let me answer this. Uh, hold on. Okay, so usually conventional CTC detection technology rely on a single biomarker, like a surface antigen, for example, to capture CTC or CTC like cells from a huge heterogeneous population. Like uh, using like a nanoparticles attached to the surface antigen or na nano sorry nano metal particles so that you can use the magnet to to isolate those cells. But when something happens to the surface antigen, you basically miss those cells, right? Uh, what's advantageous here is that we can see many features simultaneously. We just don't rely on single biomarker. Uh, we, we can do surface antigen. We can see the sort of nucleus to cytoplasm ratio or some other molecules within the cell body. 
to do a more like a more complex or maybe we can use AI, you know, the more information we get, the <clears throat> uh, we can do use AI to, to do more uh, efficient detection and isolation of CTCs from the large heterogeneous population. Uh, yeah, that's, that's better than single, single point measurement or single parameter based detection and isolation. But the one from the city lab, the city lab, yeah. And the Kimrichi, you have really nice intensity of the flow of the, of the cells, yeah. the steam, with different flows actually at the same time. Yeah. So, how do your technology compare to that? Because they're purely physical, nothing to do with chemistry. Say it again. So, about, I'm not sure. About based on physics, is, is the density of the cell and the particles that you measure, mm -hmm. and in which you know, position the channel of the yeah. So I'm not sure I understand their technology. I, I don't. I, I don't know how this was. So maybe centrifuge, centrifuge. Okay. Basically, density-based isolation. Okay. And then maybe you can either miss big ones or small ones. Like you, you cannot get both. Right. So that means you, you don't get the entire or big picture of the CTCs. Maybe some percentage of the big picture of the CTCs. So that, that's what you can get from that technology. Yeah. Thank you, that was very impressive. Yeah. Uh, you showed these massive um, increases in throughputs. Yes. But presumably there is a fixed cost in terms of teaching the AI system, the mm -hmm. AI system, cell or group of cells. Mm -hmm. Can you comment on how long that would be? How long it takes to train yes. to see? Yeah, that's a separate separate thing. So, so normally, once we get uh, sort of okay, suppose there's an experiment to do, like uh, for example, this one. You want to uh, detect and isolate CTCs. Uh, then you you start with uh, a different solutions first. So, like uh, solution A that contains only red blood cells. Solution B that contains white blood cell, some special type of white blood cell, special white blood cell type A, B, C, blah, 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 and CTCs or CTC-like cells. You just correct. Uh, and then you flow those cells into the system and then acquire lots of images. And then we do, uh, initially do the supervised uh, uh, CNN <clears throat> uh, to basically to, uh, to teach the AI system or CNN to remember those images or to remember those features. And then once we get those image libraries acquired and learned on the CNN, and then we, we bring a sort of a unknown uh, a solution that contains, I don't know, we, we don't know how many uh, CTCs or something. And then based on the learned or uh, supervised learned uh, CNN, we, we do this analysis, identification and sorting. So yeah. that will take a while, but you yeah. can do it That's right, yeah. So depending on the experiment they did. Preparation takes time, but once the teaching is done, and the rest is pretty, pretty simple. And also we can share that land model with everyone, basically. So we have a different models. Uh, you know, if they want to share the, the, you know, the, the uh, CNN models with everyone else, then we can do it. Then you, you don't have to do it, somebody else can do it. Yeah. I, I have a question related. Yeah. Is the data set of this one now freely accessible? Yeah, so uh, not everything, but uh, I mean, it's a lot of, lot of data. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's available basically. If you contact me, I, I can provide it. Yeah. So my question is to the resolution of the system. Yeah. I know you can do a reconstruct rate increasing the system. Mm -hmm. So I guess if your population is a state of the 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 
two kinds of heterogeneity. So basically, the sort of instrumentations heterogeneity, the instrument, instrumentation's capability to identify heterogeneity, or the, the solution itself is heterogeneous. So the, and then the result is, of course, of course, the product of those two heterogeneities. Uh, so in, uh, in, when it comes to the instrument's heterogeneity, the instrument's capability to isolate, basically, it's, at the end, it's limited to the spatial resolution of the system. That, that means the uh, uh, numerical aperture of the object lens and also imaging system which is, I don't, I don't remember the exact number, it's probably about uh, 500 nanometer, or a couple hundred nanometer. Uh, uh, yeah, that's a special resolution. That means, yeah, I guess you, you understand. Uh, it's, that's about the limit currently. We can Im improve it further. Uh, currently, that's the limit because, yeah, let me change. We use a microfluidic device, a microfluidic chip. That means the cells are flowing in the microfluidic channel. So we cannot bring the uh, object lens too close to the uh, cells because there's a flow in between. So there's a gap between the cell and the uh, object lens. So that sort of limits the DNA of the, uh, uh, of the object lens, or that limits the spatial resolution. Um, we are currently watching on super resolution image activated cell sorting. That's more challenging, but I, we kind of understand that we, this in principle is possible. <clears throat> we try to do it. The second part is the biological heterogeneity. Uh, so to eliminate the possibilities that we are, we are not mixed up between the biological heterogeneity and system uh, 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 limited capability. We basically try to make the, the cells as homogeneous as possible in the beginning. Like we can do like a synchronized uh, uh, cultivation in the beginning to prepare cells. Like for example, this uh, yeast cells, like a mother and daughter, right? Uh, we try to condition the, the culture medium so that uh, they usually, uh, they, so that they start uh, you know, at the right timing all together. Yeah, so, 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 yeah. So, so that, uh, yeah, then we try to minimize the biological heterogeneity. And then that means once we detect those uh, uh, heterogeneity, uh, heterogeneous features from those images, that means that's a true biological heterogeneity. Right. Yes. Uh, so let me. Uh, okay. Here, right? Yeah. So this uh, sort of this I I don't remember the name of this uh, photography technique. It's uh, basically it's a uh, it's a uh, stroboscopic. Oh, so this it's, is a, oh, <laughs> it's not a stream. It's, it's not not a stream. Yeah. This. Yeah. It's a. Uh, it's a single cell, basically. It's a single cell, but, but uh, uh, image at different yeah. times, yeah. So <clears throat> uh, throughput is 100 cells per second at one meter per second. That means you can sort of calculate the average interval between cells, which is kind of large, like much larger than the cell size. So there's a large space between consecutive cells. Yeah, then but occasionally, yeah, two cells come nearly at the same time. And then it's not possible to solve only one of them. So that leads to sort of false event, false positive events sometimes. Yeah, I think we should have one. Oh, no, question. Question. Um, fantastic. I always ask you the same question. Yeah. Um, but my question now has two parts. So I thought the one you know is the same question. How this gets explored in the real world? I mean, is this something that people talk about that they can take into the computer and compile it? And then the second part of the question how do you make it um, less bulky? Because there's still a lot of bulky components and lasers and precept optics. And what's the most difficult aspect of that? 
Yeah. So I had the same question before. That's why we started a company. I don't think the university is good at doing that kind of thing, like, you know, miniaturizing things and, and you know, like, uh, you know, the talking about reliability, robustness, and those things, because we were more worried about publications and patents and those things. Uh, so, yeah, I basically left everything to the, to the company. So they, they are now trying to commercialize it into this kind of system. <clears throat> so that's what they do. Why are we more focused on like improving the high uh, the throughput purity and other capabilities to push the, you know, the spe specification of the technology. That's what we do at the university level. Yeah. Okay, and how big is that? This, this one. Okay, I mean, this is not a real picture, so <laughs> it's about the one meter by one meter by two meter or something. Yeah. But the real, uh, I don't, yeah, this system, it's, a, uh, it's on an optics table. So it's pretty big, like a couple meter by couple meter by, by couple meter, yeah. yeah pretty, I mean, because we don't worry about the size at, at the beginning because, because we wanted uh, a more degrees of freedom to tune the system. Okay, any questions? Thank you very much. Uh, given Professor Godo's condition, we are very lucky <laughs> to have him here. So please join me to thank him. For his thank you. Thank you.